Excuse me, Max. I don't. <sighs> What's up, people? We are back with another one. We are on episode seven of this mini off-road build go-kart electric thing that we got going on here. And I know a lot of you probably think I've been dragging on these episodes for a long time, but this is gonna be the episode where we put all the electric stuff on the frame and get the thing moving, hopefully. Cross our fingers, right, Max? We're gonna try. So, figure out where we left off in the last episode when you actually saw me building this thing. Episode four, we did this. So here it is, the Momo wheel. We put the quick release on, we put the whole steering system together. It goes on the go-kart smoothly, but I never hooked up the actual steering tie rod ends up in the front of the go-kart. And that's because this is the concept that I left off with. So basically after wasting my time making this, it doesn't really work. It doesn't have enough throw to turn. So what I'm going to end up doing is using these things. And just do one and one. Alright, but real quick we're going to take a time out because before we go ahead and just throw these on the go-kart, there was something I forgot to mention to you guys about using this, like you saw in that little clip. For steering so not only did this not work because I didn't have enough throw side to side there's one more factor we got to take into effect that I didn't mention but I want to fill you guys in on this so even though the original TY rod 4 used a steering system like this where it had a solid link and then a single link going to the steering stem for steering it doesn't really work in this application we got going on here because I added the full suspension to it. So, what do I mean by that? Well, not only do we have the cantilever arms going this way, we still have the horizontal A arms in the front. And what these A arms end up causing is this effect. When the suspension goes up and down, it's actually doing a half circle shape. So, as the suspension goes down, the control arms come out and it does this. Now the problem you run into is if you have a solid steering arm in the front and you compress the suspension, the wheels are going to end up turning in, hence bump steer. So it's a common known problem with a lot of cars, pretty much anything with full suspension. And the more aggressive your suspension gets, the more aggressive that bump steer gets. And what ends up happening is you're driving down the road, you hit a bump, and the go-kart is just gonna fling to one side or the other side. You don't know, it's uncontrollable, it's called bump steer. So, to get rid of that problem, like I said, I was gonna use these little Heinz joints tie rod ends. But, little did I know, since we have such an aggressive lift angle going on here, these little Heinz joint ends didn't have enough angle to make this shape. So what was happening was it would all work and go together fine when the go-kart was in its full up position. But as soon as you try to steer it, these turn into a very aggressive angle and it would bind up the ball and it wouldn't actually turn left and right. But it would work as far as going up and down. So I had to scrap this idea. And this was also part of my problems for this three month gap between my videos. The solution I came up with is using tie rod ends from a Honda TRX 450, a quad. I took the whole tie rod end, I should say, and I cut the middle tie rod end. I made them shorter and I used the ball joints from the quad steering on the go-kart. And what that allows is a lot more movement left to right. And we have almost little to no bump steer. Perfect. So as the Perfect. suspension goes up and down, the wheels pretty much stay straight the whole time. Perfect. Maybe very little go in and out, but nothing compared to what it would have been with this solid link. So now that we got that out of the way, the suspension is taken care of. It's all working. We can go left, we can go right. So let's make a list of everything else that we have to do 
to just keep the ball rolling on this build. So let's go shoot to the table real quick. Perfect. Perfect. So here's the to do list. We got steering, which we can cross off the list because that is finished. But other things that we have to do in this episode is going to be the battery box, motor, mount, and foot brake, and foot throttle. Now there's probably more stuff we have to do like wiring and all that stuff, but these are going to be the big things we are going to try to accomplish in the next couple minutes. So let's jump right to the battery box. Episode six, we left off with using these green work lithium batteries that they use in like lawn equipment and stuff like that. But I only had two of them. Now we got six of them. So I guess the only next big question is where the heck are we gonna put six of these batteries on this go-kart? So I feel like the only practical way of putting these batteries on this go-kart, here's a size reference. So like that's the battery, that's the go-kart. I'm thinking of making a box that goes underneath the whole thing. So we'll do one, two, three, and then four, five, six, and just have it as close to the bottom of the go-kart as possible. So this should be pretty easy. We're gonna take this diamond plate and put it on the floor and cut this little square shape in. We got this. So now let's take this thing. Oh my God. Got a little trimming to do, but this is the rough size. Let's see if we can configure the batteries on here somehow. So here's the top of the box that we just cut. And I think... They look like they fit, so let's make sides and a basically the same way. We're gonna cut one more of these pieces of aluminum and then take this angle line, make little slices on it and basically fold it so it creates the outsides of the box. And just like that, we got the frame. So now that we got the frame and the bottom plate, what we could do is flip this, Line it up, and I'm gonna use popper bits to put this together. So we're gonna have to go with the drill, drill some holes around the whole thing, just like that, and pop all the popper bits in. And that gives us this box. So with this box, we can now put our six batteries. And what we're gonna have to do now is make a divider just to hold the batteries out. And for another reason, but we'll get to that real soon. So let's make a divider. I wanna use something non-conductive, just like this white plastic board we got here. So what I'm thinking of doing is cutting this just like this and like that on this table saw, which is really sketchy to do. That was probably the wrong way of doing it. But now check it out. We got a divider. A divider, a spacer, and I just cut three of them for the front. What I'm gonna do is drill two holes and put like a zip tie so I have a little handle to pick them back up, but that'll space out the front of the batteries. Now, if you're wondering why I wanted to do this and this, is because somehow, hear me out, we're gonna have to make little things that go in here so I can get the power out of these batteries and hook them all up in parallel. 
So I'm gonna use these dividers to do that. And this is how. What I did was I cut these little pieces of copper. Believe it or not, it started off as a round piece of pipe and I filleted it down the middle and cut them into these tiny little sections and grinded them so they're pretty much this small little consistency we got here now. And the game plan with these things are to shove it in the back of the battery, bend them out. And we're just gonna do that over for all of them. Now we bent them all out. We're just gonna bring them over to the vise and bend them one more time back. So now what that bend back, that shape that we just made here, what that allows us to do is, oh wait, first we gotta cut these. Let's just cut these real quick with the saw. Two seconds, all right, we're done. So what the copper bend back allows is if you put our copper strips in these newly cut slots that we just made. Push it in good. And we push this one in good. So see what I did there? Now I'm gonna do that to each one. We're gonna put this in there. And what that allows us for is to take that front spacer out. Say this is mounted in there. You're gonna have to screw it to the wall, take your battery, line up your battery with the little grooves in the back and push it in. Like I said, we got to put screws so everything stays straight and that gets pushed into there. And what that's basically gonna do is give us the ability to take the voltage out of the battery that 80.1 volts so what I'm gonna do now is just solder wires on here it was a little harder than what I thought it was gonna be to actually solder these wires these little top copper tabs mainly because I use an 8 gauge wire and it's a very fine strand 8 gauge with silicone outside sheathing so it was pretty hard to solder but I managed to do a pretty good job that was the first piece. Now this is the second piece and I ran out of black wire. So basically it's going to look like all positives, but I'll show you how I fixed that right now. So here are the two pieces. So this is the one that has the black and reds. It looks like it's painted because it is painted. Pro tip, paint the wires so you don't get confused. But when I was making these, I came up with a different way. What I'm gonna do is uh, actually bring them all together like this. And uh, just find a way to run them so they stay together. Just like that, we got a battery box. So now we can take our batteries, slide them in. Just like so. Doesn't get much easier than this. And then we take our homemade spacers. And we got our positive, our negative feed. And last but not least, the lid to the box. So, safe to say that we completed the battery box. So it's time to move on to the motor mount. So let's go do that. Before we make the bracket itself, we gotta take care of the mount on the go-kart. Cause 
of the extreme lift that we gave it. It kind of has a little downward. Hey, we have a guest host here. Hey, Max. Let's say hi to the people on YouTube. Those are some wise words you got there. But you're a good boy. You're a good boy. So back to the go-kart. We are going to have to lift this so it kind of sticks out a little straighter. Not so much in a downward angle, which is easy. Just going to have to go with the grinder. Cut this old bracket off. Make some new ones. And just weld the whole thing together. Slightly overkill, but I like it. So... Now we got that taken care of. Let's do a quick little test. Oh yeah, that's strong. Make the go-kart do wheelies. Let's make the actual motor mount. Here's the motor. And what we got here is a piece of aluminum in an L shape that we are gonna use to make the mount. So I gotta cut a hole that's gonna be roughly that big. So let's go shoot to the drill press. Not too sure if this is actually gonna work or not, but since there's nothing to really center the pilot bit into, cause the, a piece of aluminum has a cutout square, I put a piece of plywood underneath it, but I guess let's find out if it will cut or just go out of control. I was going backwards with the drill, but it finally did cut through and check it out. Let's go see what it looks like on the motor. There's the motor, here's the plate, and we got... Oh, that looks like perfect fitment, guys. See that there? So now what we got left is to drill these four holes. So we could put some screws in, have a mounting plate. So check it out. There's the motor mounted on the back of the go-kart on the motor mount that we just made. Now, I'm not 100% done with it because I feel like I want to make support braces that go from this front face to the bottom on both sides, just a little piece like that, just to support it with this flex motion when it goes under torque. Even though it's plenty strong the way it is now, I just wanna give it that extra little bit. But this thing is looking crazy. The more stuff I put on it, the better and better it's looking. So let's check out that to-do list one more time of things that I want to accomplish in this episode. We finished the steering. We finished the battery box. We just finished the motor mount. It looks like there's nothing left to do on this to-do list. So I think it's safe to say that we are going to bring this episode to an end. We're somewhere in the 18 minute mark, I believe. And I've been working on this thing for 11 hours straight. So safe to say I'm shot. This thing is looking amazing. We got so much done in this episode. You gotta remember Rome wasn't built in one day. So with that, I'm going to have to say thanks for watching. Please subscribe, tell everybody you know that's into these electric things about my videos, have them check it out, just send them the link, leave it up to them if they want to subscribe, but thanks so much for watching. Episode 8 is going to come out real soon, and I have a strong feeling that we're going to have this thing up and driving by episode 8. So hit the little notification button, this way you know as soon as I post that video, if you want to see some results and see what this thing can really do with that 5kw motor we got there and all those batteries thanks for watching one more time see you guys in the next one